If I told you four years ago that this player would be the number one overall draft pick in the 2022 MLB draft, you'll probably laugh in my face. Back then, Elijah Green was a 14-year-old, not coordinated, very raw, inconsistent player. But today, this 18-year-old outfielder and right-handed pitcher out of Windermere, Florida, who is 6'3", 225 pounds, and attends IMG Academy, will be the number one overall draft pick in the 2022 MLB Draft. In fact, listen to what Harold Reynolds says about him. Jonathan, when I got a chance to see him play, uh, the skills jumped off, he matched the size. He's just an impressive young man. Yeah, he checks off a lot of boxes, Harold, in terms of what a top of the draft guy looks like. He, he really has all five tools, and we talk about that all the time, but uh, he can do everything. So how will he be the number one overall pick? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you why Elijah Green will be the first pick taken in the 2022 MLB draft. So if you're looking to one day get drafted, Get out your notebook and get ready because this is going to be a draft masterclass. If you're new to this channel, I'm former Major League Baseball player Jermaine Curtis, and I like to talk all things baseball, including analyzing prospects and pinpointing why they will be successful. So why do I think Elijah Green will be the number one overall pick? Well, I think the numbers really speak for themselves. In 2021, Elijah Green ran a 6.16 60 yard dash. Let me just tell you, this is super impressive. And what's even more impressive is that when we put this in a running speed calculator, we see that he ran a blazing 20 miles per hour. To put this in context, Justin Upton, former first overall pick, ran a 6-2-3 60 yard dash when he was 18. And I remember watching him run in 2005 and being blown away from his speed. I literally said, that is first round speed. And it's the same thing I said when I seen Elijah Green run. In fact, let's dive into that. As you can see, he is super athletic. And when he gets off the line, he's very explosive. I really like how he keeps his head down as he accelerates to full speed. These are proper mechanics for stealing bases. And it's what Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson taught me when I played with the Oakland A's. Speaking of Ricky Henderson, look how he stays down in his first few steps before accelerating to full speed. Now, let's look at both together. I know it's two different angles, but you can see similarities between the two. They both have elite athleticism and explosiveness. And Elijah Green's speed is just like Ricky Henderson in a class of its own. And it's the type of speed that can change a baseball game. And it's the type of speed that can cause pitchers to make mistakes in pressure situations. Or it's the type of speed that put pressure on position players and cause them to make errors. It's the type of speed that gets selected in that top spot. Now his defense would no doubt benefit from his speed. In fact, I remember playing with Oscar Tavares with the St. Louis Cardinals when he was a young prospect, R.I.P.O.T. Many scouts criticized whether or not he could play center field. Well, as time went on, he just worked on getting better every day and perfecting his craft. And he became confident in his ability and eventually he would play shallow and use his blazing speed to catch balls in the gaps and in the deep part of the field. There would be balls when they were hit and I would be like, there's no way he's catching that. That's an easy triple. And out of nowhere, he would be under it, catching it. And once he caught it, I would look at the hitter's face and the hitter looked like he had seen a ghost. Now, I believe that it'll take time for Elijah Green to be comfortable enough to play at that level. But I do think it's possible that we do see Elijah Green taking away weak hits and balls that are absolutely crushed in the gaps and throwing guys out at home play in Baltimore very, very soon. Which brings me to my next point. Now, at first glance, I looked at him and I was like, he doesn't have an arm. But then I seen him throwing 94 miles per hour. I was like, what the heck? Then I started looking into more videos and I was like, he has a cannon. It's the type of arm from an outfielder that would bait hitters to try and run home on him from second base. This is the type of arm that fans want to see. And this is the type of arm that pitchers love because he can save them runs. And this is why I think he's special. There's just so many ways it can help a team win. And at the major league level, winning is what matters. And we haven't even talked about the most important parts of his game yet. Now, the biggest knock on Elijah Green is his hitting. 
Many scouts believe he swing and miss too much. Listen to what they have to say. I think the only question about Elijah Green that some scouts have, and probably the reason why he isn't number one, although a lot of these guys are interchangeable, is a little bit of swing and miss uh, in his game. And I think he's going to go out, he's going to face the tough competition that IMG Academy has, and he can go out and improve that his hit tool is for real so he can get to that power. And then he is going to be in that conversation at number one if he goes out and hits in the spring. Yeah, I think that's definitely right. You know, talking to scouts, I mean, they'll tell you repeatedly, this guy does things that not many players can do. And, you know, I do think the swing and miss issue is there a little bit. Um, if he hits this spring, if he answers that question, I think he very well could go number one. And, and Jonathan, I think it'd be fair to say he probably has the highest ceiling. Now, I understand the scout's perspective on him. With the pitching getting much harder the higher you go up, if he's swinging and missing now, there could be a big problem later on. However, they did say the same thing about Joey Gallo. And when I played against Joey, he was doing exactly what he's doing right now. He would strike out, hit a home run, or walk. It was fascinating to see you literally had a 33% chance of guessing what he would do at the plate. And if he did hit the baseball, it was an absolute tank out of the ballpark. The type of tank that if he was playing away, the other team's fans will stand up and give him a standing ovation. But I believe at worst, Elijah Green would be like Joey Gallo. No offense or no knock to Joey Gallo, I love his game. But I believe as an 18 year old, he is mentally mature beyond his years. This clip right here is the reason I believe that. What? What skill set are you looking to fine tune the most before you take your talents to the professional level? I'd say being more consistent at the plate. I'm a little inconsistent at, as of right now, but once I get that down, the sky's the limit. See, he is aware of what he needs to work on. And it's this mental maturity that allow him to separate himself from the rest because he will identify his problems and then get in the cage and start working on. I also believe he'll be the type of player that asks veteran coaches for help when he needs it. As a former player, most players do not ask for help. They struggle alone, never asking anyone for help. Some get out of their slumps, some don't. Some just die with their ego. But I believe that Elijah Green would not suffer the same fates as those who have big egos. He would take a little from everyone and continue to improve his game so he could be the best player he can be. And that is why I believe he will fix his swing and miss issues. He will be mature enough and humble enough to ask for help from veterans so he can fix his issues. Which leads me to his best tool. See, the power tool that he has is already at an elite level. He's already hitting the ball upwards to 100 miles per hour at 18 years old, which means as he gets older and stronger, that number will increase. And usually in baseball, the players that can hit the ball hardest usually have the most success in the game. Therefore, if he can work on his swing and miss issue this season at IMG Academy versus top tier talent, he will be the number one overall draft pick in 2022. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you think he would be the number one overall pick or who? And who should I break down next? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, you enjoyed this video right here where I break down Emmanuel Beltre, his swing, and why he's considered the world's best prospect. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.